In 1927, explorers in Paracas, Peru discovered something spectacular. Hundreds of human-like skeletons with incredible elongated skulls. Researchers claim these are humans that underwent cranial binding as infants, a technique for modifying the shape of the skull, a practice once common in the Americas, Africa, and even Europe. Gaia.com and several others have their doubts. Could it be that scientists have lied to us? How can we know for ourselves that these aren't extraterrestrial beings? A company in Los Angeles called Bone Clones recently got a hold of the largest known Peruvian skulls. They used them to make casts and now near-perfect replicas for the public to witness and study for themselves. You are watching Episode 1 of Citizen Science vs. The Aliens of Peru. Jackson Perry here. I'm with my Uncle John. <laughs> Hello. Jackson and I today, we have gotten a hold of an elongated Paracas skull. And we've got a normal human skull here. Yeah. These are both replicas from Bone Clones. And there's actually a video of us opening these. <laughs> Maybe you've seen that. Maybe you've not. <laughs> uh, Jackson, tell them about your glasses. You just got new glasses today. Yeah, I know. Decent. I knew, like when I put, first put them. I'm like, wait, a normal human supposed to see that well? Yeah. New glasses day for Jackson. I also have horrible eyes. I wear contact lenses. Oh. But that's besides the point. There are people on the internet that believe that this elongated skull is an alien. Yeah. Some people think that. There is a guy on the internet named Brian Forster. He makes a lot of YouTube videos about these. Lots. Just. So that you know the normal idea about what this thing is, most people think that the Paracas people like to elongate their skulls through cranial deformation. Yep. When they have babies, they will put fabric around the head and it forced the skull to grow long instead of the normal round shape. And this is a really common practice among lots of different native cultures and even some European cultures and African cultures. Brian Forrester thinks that there's something extra special about this. He doesn't think that it's just normal he elongation. It's 25% larger. Yeah. He claims that he has measured the overall volume of the elongated skulls, not just the length, but the entire volume. And he claims that the Paracas skulls are 25% larger all around than a normal human skull. Now, skull binding cannot do that. It will increase the length, but it does so by decreasing the width Therefore, he suspects that these skulls do not belong to normal humans. I, I suspect that he's wrong, but he is doing good work getting people excited about, you know, archaeology, yeah. right? So uh, I, I would qualify a lot of what he does as pseudoscience. Do you know what that is? Pseudoscience? No. Well, if you know anything about human anatomy and variation, especially normal skull variation, and then you watch Brian's videos or read his articles. It seems that what he's doing is he studies the elongated skulls, looking for things about them that might seem abnormal. And when he finds an abnormality, and by the way, every skull you look at will have some sort of abnormality. This is just because different people are different from each other. When he finds an abnormality, he immediately claims that this is evidence that the Paracas people are not normal humans. And he does this without checking the scientific literature to see if those abnormalities fall within regular human variation. Pseudoscience is when you use language that makes you sound scientific, even though what you're doing is not scientific. You and I have talked a little bit about what science is, right? Yes. How would you define science? What does a scientist do? Um, so what they do is they discover tests to see if their evidence is true. Yeah. So sci science is just the collection, very careful collection and documentation of observable facts, things that we can see with our eyes or take in with our other senses. It's the collection of those, careful documentation of those, and then it's an ongoing discussion about what those facts might mean. Brian Forrester is sort of doing that, so maybe I shouldn't really be calling his work pseudoscience. But the main problem with his work is that he often ignores the facts that other researchers have gathered. In fact, if you read his book, it seems that he hasn't even read the scientific literature on skull binding, embryology, or suture obliteration. These are all topics that you would have to be well aware of before being justified in making the claims that he makes. In his book, instead of citing scientific papers, he usually just quotes Wikipedia, and I'm not joking, huge chunks of his book are literally copied and pasted from Wikipedia. He does not go to the source material. It's very strange. 
A lot of people think that this is an alien because it's slightly weird looking. Now, Brian Forrester, he, he's, he doesn't really support that idea that this is definitely an alien. He thinks that it might be uh, one of several different things. He thinks that it might be an alien-human hybrid. He thinks it might be a normal human genetically engineered by aliens. In his book, he's, he puts forth the, the idea of an uh, angel-human hybrid. Uh, doesn't isn't this skull at the front of his book? Yeah, this is cool. the skull. That's this is a replica of the skull that's from Bill Clinton. That's yeah on his book. The other idea that he says is that this might just be a different species of humans, one that has never been discovered by science so far. So those those are the main ideas that he has about these. This was made by bone clones, and to make it, they actually took the original skull, they used it to make a cast, and then they used that cast to make these replicas of the skull. So this skull is, you know, millimeter to millimeter, the same as the original. It's a really high quality cast the bone clones makes. And the same goes with this skull. This is a, a normal human skull. Yep. What I want to do here, because science is about the collection and documentation of observable facts, I want to just have you and I look at these and we're going to look at what's the same and what's different. I mean, obviously this one's way taller at least, yeah. but what are some other things that you can see here that might be different? Ooh, I know. The eye sockets are, this one's eye sockets are a teeny bit bigger. Yeah. The eye sockets and the elongated skull are a little bit longer. They're a little bit taller. They're also shallower. So it looks like the overall volume of the eye sockets has not changed, but it's like it's like someone took a head and smashed it up like that. <laughs> if, you, if you were to take a skull like this and it was made out of clay and you were just to roll it like that, it would stretch the eye sockets up a little bit and stretch the head out. And it looks like something similar to that happened with this skull through cranial binding. So yes, the eyes are taller. Lovely. What else is different with these? Anything else that you notice? No, not really. What about the teeth? Oh, one's missing more. Yeah, she is missing several teeth. She's missing one, two, three, four, five. Five. She's kind of got that one. It's just broken out. These ones look like they've been removed. Um, and the removal of these two looks like it happened successfully. The bone healed really nice there. But these two, that looks brutal. <laughs> she was probably in a lot of pain from whatever kind of surgery she had had there, or dental removal. It's, you know, this skull we believe is over 2,000 years old. Yeah, so like a native. Yeah, a native Peruvian. It makes sense because of the cranial binding. They thought that was beautiful for some reason. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, lots of Native American cultures did that, and some African and European. But <laughs> the crazy thing about these teeth here, we don't know for sure if they had any painkillers in their culture good painkillers but today if we have surgery we have teeth removed we go under you know we don't feel it at all or we either go under or they just numb our mouths really well she might not have had any of that she might have just gone to her dentist and they just ripped out those teeth oh that would have been so brutal and this poor woman her teeth are also very ground down but she has normal human teeth right there's nothing alien about this brian forrester has noted several differences that you didn't notice one of the big differences is, she, is that she is missing a suture. sagittal suture. This guy has all three. Here you can see that on the top of his head, like, going towards the back. There's like little three lines. Yeah, there's the sagittal suture right there. She is missing that suture. It's just smooth. So Brian Forster noticed that. The other thing that he noticed are these little holes. Little holes. So Brian Forrester says that these, this little hole here, there's actually two little holes. It's kind of hard to see them. He says that these little holes are unique to elongated skulls, that they don't exist in normal humans. Those are the things that he's noted. He says that the elongated skulls can't be normal humans because they're 25% larger than normal skulls. He says that they can't be humans because they are missing the sagittal suture. And he says that they can't be normal humans because they have... Uh, a hole here on the back that normal humans don't have. Actually, two holes on the back that normal humans don't have. So those are the claims that he has made. And he makes these claims in videos on YouTube. He makes them in his book. He makes them in various articles on, on the internet. And for these reasons, he thinks that this is not 
a normal human. There's something weird going on. It's just something special, something very different. So, Jackson, we, over the next few weeks, we're going to examine each of these claims, starting with the missing sagittal suture. Yep. And finally, we're going to actually test the volume of these skulls. I have made a volume testing apparatus. We're going to use Archimedes' principle to measure the volume of an irregular object being these skulls. And we're going to find out if this one really is 25% larger than this one. I kind of suspect that it's not. And I'll tell you why. Look at how big and round his forehead is. Look at hers, it's totally flat. That's where we're missing some volume. Look how big and wide from, from left to right his skull is. And look how narrow hers is. If I set them on the table, this skull is taller than this one is sideways. That makes me suspect that even though this one is taller this way, it's way taller. If, if we look at it from this angle, it looks huge, super tall. See how much taller hers is? Even though it's significantly taller that way, I think that the fact that she has such a flat forehead and such a reduced size on the left and right of the skull, I think that she actually might be close to the same size that this guy is. That's my suspicion. I think that when Brian says that it, this one is 25% larger than this one, I think he might be uh, exaggerating. So we shall see. We will do science to see because what science. scientists do is they carefully document their observations and then they talk about what those observations might mean. So we're going to start out with an experiment that we're going to do on you, good people of the internet next week. So make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel so that you catch that. I guess if you're watching these videos long after they've been posted onto YouTube, you can just watch the one we're going to do next week right now. You know, lucky you. But for the rest of you, for those of you watching this as we make them, we will be producing these videos every Friday. See you soon.